So hi everyone. Um, my name is Morgan Bealey. I'm the Assistant Director of Medical Programs for Leadership Initiatives, as you can see behind me. Uh, and we're a 501c3 nonprofit um, that does work to transform lives around the world. Um, and we have summer programs for high school students to help you do just that. Uh, and what we're really proud of is that the work that we do to help you explore certain career paths and make an impact isn't just based in simulation or getting a glimpse into somebody else's world, but actually lets you dive into it yourself and get to experience that. So I'm a, a junior at Duke University next year where I'm studying neuroscience um, and I'm on the pre-health track. So just like you, I'm really passionate about the medical field. Uh, and I'm really excited to be here at HOSA today. Uh, I didn't have HOSA in my high school, but I've had the privilege of speaking with leadership initiatives at HOSA International in Florida in 2019. Uh, and then in the virtual setting last year, I was so impressed with how you were able to adapt for that. Uh, and I got to be a host for a, a forensics competition and it was really, really fascinating to me. So I'm really grateful to be here and to be seeing all of you I'm in awe of your, your passion and how well you do with all of these competitions. So congratulations on that. Um, so basically today I wanna to talk to you about uh, the summer programs that we offer. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a virtual diagnosis um, once uh, Awal is on the Zoom. Uh, but basically Leadership Initiatives offers an advanced medical and public health internship uh, and an advanced medical and neuroscience internship, uh, both of which will take place in a virtual format over the course of two weeks this summer. Uh, and these programs, like I said, are designed to really immerse you in the field uh, as if you were doing it for real, because you are going to be doing it for real. Uh, and so for the advanced medical and public health internship, uh, I had the privilege of helping design it. And my goal was to figure out how to bring the medical fields to high school students in a way that they could be truly engaged in it. Uh, and one of the cool things we have access to is actually telehealth. And that has become even more prominent in the past year, as I know you guys are all well aware of. Uh, so what we do in the Advanced Medical and Public Health Internship is we have a, a partner doctor from Nigeria um, based in Abuja uh, who teaches all of our interns about the four most prominent diseases that are there, uh, oftentimes the most fatal. So malaria, typhoid fever, acute respiratory infections, uh, and nutritional anemia. And you learn all about the etiology and, and how they emerge, the symptoms, the signs, uh, what treatments they need, how to test for them. Uh, and then at the culmination of this study, um, after the internship on the last day, uh, you actually get to um, Zoom into or Skype into um, an exam room in Bauchi State, Nigeria at the Nigari Medical Clinic and Maternity Ward uh, and diagnose a real patient. So we have this partnership where basically in exchange for this opportunity to be working side by side with a doctor there, uh, leadership initiatives funds for the patient's treatment. And therefore, with your work in, in contributing to that patient examination and, and providing that diagnosis, you get the benefit of really being involved in, in life-saving diagnosis. While this patient who otherwise wouldn't have been able to afford the healthcare that they desperately need, um, actually is able to, to access that treatment. So that was a really, really exciting development and we love to do that. And then decided we actually wanted to take it sort of one step forward in that you get this fantastic exposure to clinical medicine uh, and, and providing treatment, but we also wanted to take a look at, you know, a more holistic medicine and looking at not just the clinical sphere, but the preventative medicine sphere and looking at public health. So uh, in addition at our internships, uh, you're actually able to be on a team where you design a public health campaign that looks at these same diseases uh, and asks you to analyze and assess some of these social determinants of health. You may have heard that's a good buzzword to throw around um, and different environmental factors and social factors and systemic things that are contributing to um, the prevalence of these diseases. And then you work as a team to design a solution and campaign for what you would like to do to work with community members in Bauchi and address what they're looking for 
to improve their health regarding these diseases. So it's incredibly interactive and it holds impact right from the get-go. Uh, and I've diagnosed probably about 15 patients now while working with leadership initiatives and every single time it is incredibly rewarding. So today we're going to be showing you that. Uh, I just wanna make sure that Alwal is on the Zoom call. Uh, Alwal, are you here? Okay, technology issues. We'll make sure that he joins. Um, in the meantime, uh, I can talk to you a little bit more about uh, these programs while we get set for, the, for him to join. Um, so we basically have this fantastic collaboration with HOSA that I'm so glad to have because our, our previous HOSA students who have attended our internships demonstrate incredibly good leadership skills and such a, such a good foundation for the knowledge that we're providing already that we're always really wowed with, with what they come in with and then again, what they leave, leave with. So uh, I've had the, the opportunity to speak with Nancy Allen several times uh, and she's an amazing member of, of HOSA who's helping us with this. And again, all of the HOSA students um, do a wonderful job. And for that, we have a sort of a partnership where we would love for you to attend our internships. Uh, and if you go to lihosa.org, we actually have a website that, that talks about this partnership and talks about um, how you can get involved with leadership initiatives in different ways. Uh, one of which is we actually offer scholarships to HOSA students um, because you all do such a great job. Uh, and so with a discount code HOSA hashtag 1000, you can get $1,000 off of the, the tuition fee to attend some of our programs. Uh, which hopefully is is good incentive. Awal, oh, well, is that you there? Yeah, look, there he is. Okay, hey, Awal, well, how are you? Would you mind unmuting uh, your your audio, please? Oh, oh sorry, <laughs> I no. thought I unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. All right. Um, so this is Awal, and he's going to be helping. He, hey, Awal, can you tell everyone where you are right now? Would you mind telling everyone here where you are right now? Bear with me. The internet connection seems to be a little bit rough. Oh, well, would you mind okay, telling me where you're calling from? Yeah, just introducing yourself, please. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you perfectly. Thanks so much. All right, thank you. Okay, actually, this is Awa. My name, of course. <laughs> All right. So um, <laughs> I'm the program manager here. And uh, right now, I am at uh, Nagari Clinic. That is the clinic we're partnering with. Uh, this is where we're going to run our call. So as you can see from the background, um, let me just turn the camera to this. Uh, her. You can see a patient there lying down on the bed, and that will be the patient we're going to use. Let me turn it to empty. Most probably, we get a better view. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Awal. Um, and I just want to make sure um, everybody can, can see well enough because I know the presentation format's a little tough. Um, I was on gallery view before and everything was kind of small. If you guys would like to, to pin the camera um, on Awal's video, maybe that's sort of helpful or you can put it on me or if you can pin both of them, whatever you'd like, but I think that's maybe a good option. Um, all right, yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. I think the internet's pretty good. Um, so okay. would, you mind, would you mind just sort of introducing everyone to the patient we have here? And then if you guys are all right with it and our patient is ready, I'm actually gonna do a, a sample diagnosis for you today so you can see what you would be learning um, by attending our internship and, and be able to sort of gauge what this telehealth situation is oh. like because it's a really special experience. So, Awal, would you mind telling us about the patient, please? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, well, let me do it this way. You know, it's better you hear it from the host's mouth, right? The doctor, of course. That is him sitting down. That is Dr. Babangide for you. So, he's going to be your doctor now. So, I don't want to cross borders. So, I let, me, let him do his work, right? All right. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Awal. All right. Okay. Would you mind just yeah. doing a, a brief focus. introduction, please, for all of the students we have here? Good evening, Morgan. Good evening, Morgan. Hey, how are you? Uh, am I speaking with Morgan? Yeah, you're speaking uh, yeah, with Morgan. Yeah, I think we met before. Yeah, we have. How are yeah. you? 
fine. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Uh, I have a lot How of doing? interested students right here with yeah. me, so I'm so excited to be with them all. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. It's nice to speak with you this evening. Yeah. Nice so to meet you once again. Yeah. Okay. So, would you mind? We're gonna we're gonna do a, show them all a virtual diagnosis now. Okay, uh, I'm done. Would you mind just would you mind just introducing the patient to everybody so they have a sense of who we're, who we're looking at right now? Okay. Who's the father guy? You know, I can make a key. Okay, Shekarunka. Okay, his name is um his name is Mustafa. He's a 35 year old man who works as a hospital attendant. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. So hi Mustafa, I'm Morgan. Uh, and today I'm going to be showing all of these students here um, a virtual diagnosis. But of course, first, I would love to ask for your permission if it's all right for me to ask you some questions. Okay, so now so that's then Marco and Stambiri, it's not so simple, that's each other. Okay, he says it's okay. Okay, you perfect. can go. Ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so just so everybody knows on the call, um, they're actually speaking in Hausa right now. And so when you uh, would do the diagnosis on your own, uh, the doctor who's helping you out will be able to do a lot of the translating for you so that you can actually just have a very natural exchange with the patient. So that's how you're going to be able to see us do it for now, like this. Um, so would you mind asking the patient, uh, Mustafa, why you came in today and what's not feeling well? Okay. Um, Mustafa, it's not just the same because we ask you to make it down. Is it the bee that you? Okay, same here, Kuma. Okay, same here, Kuma. Okay, Kwana no. Okay, he says um he's been having fever, headache, some abdominal pain with decreased appetite, all of three days duration. Okay, yeah, great. Thank you so much. You got that. So, so fever, headache, uh, and loss of appetite for three days. Great. And I think what do next, as I'll show them, is I'm going to ask just a little bit about um, sort of some more context about Mustafa's life so we can kind of get to know his situation better. So would you mind asking a little bit about um, what Mustafa has been, been doing recently um, and whether he's been able to go to work or, or whether he's had to stay home? Okay, so I'm going to go to the next one. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Uh oh, are you there? Can you hear me? Okay. Hello, Morgan. Yes, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can. I can hear you. So I okay, just want to know if you hear me. Yes. Did you get I what I just said? Uh, no, would you mind repeating yourself, please? Okay, he says um, he's not been able to go to work for a while now since the onset of his illness. So he's been feeling very weak. And for that reason, he's not been able to go to work. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, so I would love to ask some other questions uh, about his symptoms. Uh, so I know you said uh, fever, stomach ache, loss of appetite, headache. Um, has he been vomiting at all? Okay. Um, it's in the fire on the life. And can I, I mean, back at Amen. Okay, he's not been vomiting. Okay, yeah. Uh, and and does he experience any um, like shortness of breath or any lightheadedness? Can I add some? Um, come on, what has a numpashini kokuma than jiri jiri? Okay, 
he said he's been having some um, lightheadedness, but no history of um um what again? Anytime bacon. Okay, yeah, yeah. The shortness of breath is not there. He's not been having any shortness of breath, but complaints of lightheadedness. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so no breathing problems. That's definitely good to know. Um, and can I ask? Has he been around other people who have been feeling sick recently too, or yeah. or not? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I tell that even Marisa like can come here and that? Okay. okay, he's not been around sick people recently. Okay, yeah. All right, so I'm just going to talk to the students here for a little bit about where, I, where I'm standing with my diagnosis. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to take the patient's history a little bit, uh, get a better sense of, of his symptoms and his situation that he's been in. Uh, and for me, I'm thinking about how uh, he has... I'm thinking about these four diseases that I mentioned uh, and the symptoms of the fever, the headache, the stomach ache, loss of appetite. These can align pretty well with either malaria or typhoid fever. Um, the fact that our, our patient doesn't have any breathing issues um, leads me to believe that probably there's no acute respiratory infection involved. Uh, and I do know that nutritional anemia can be comorbid with, with typhoid and malaria. So I'm definitely going to investigate that a little bit too. Um, but I think we should probably get a better sense of, of uh, narrowing down those other diseases a little bit more here. So um, would you mind asking the patient about his fever a little bit, uh, whether it's been constant, getting worse, or whether it's intermittent and, and breaks at all? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh-oh. That's a problem. Internet issue. Are you there? Okay. Okay. Hi, you guys are back. Um, but I think you're on mute right now. Would you mind unmuting your, your audio again? Okay. Yeah. So, oh, there we go. Hi again. Uh, what about sorry. that? The network issues. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. That's actually, I think the connection's better than it was before. Okay. So he described his fever as um, an intermittent fever, which is more in the evenings. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So um, to everybody listening, the intermittent fever is usually a sign of malaria, whereas a constant um, or, or even stepladder fever is going to be more indicative of typhoid fever. So that's definitely something good to keep in mind. Um, do you mind asking uh, or do you mind taking the patient's temperature and telling me what his temperature is? Okay, so um, we've already done that. His um, temperature currently is about um, 37.9 degrees Celsius. Okay, okay. So that's not too, too bad. Um, body temperature should be about 37.5 Celsius. So Point that's... 0.9. Right, okay. So that's, that's good. Our patient doesn't have, have much of a fever, um, but has been experiencing that for sure recently. Um, do you mind asking if he's been taking any antipyretics or any medicine to help with the fever or symptoms? Okay. Since the the fire action like in the cat and paracetamol when I get in Tiamaka. Okay. So he's been taking some um, oral paracetamol of late since the onset of uh, got it. All right. Okay. Okay. So he's been taking some antibiotics. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't look like it from here, but did, can you tell from there? Does the patient seem to have any paleness um, on the palms of his hands or like underneath his eyes? Any paler that might indicate nutritional anemia? All right, we'll check that out. Um, Mustafa, where am I going to go? Okay. Can you see? 
Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Can I compare with mine so they can? Yeah. yeah. This is mine. Right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Then we'll check yeah. out his uh, conjunctival too. Okay. Perfect. Right. Yeah. If he doesn't mind. All right. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. And please uh, thank the patient as well. We appreciate it. All right. All right. Yeah, he's, 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 he's to look for anemia because that could definitely be a possible symptom. Um, so right now, after asking these questions and, and just doing those examinations, uh, it definitely seems like maybe our patient might have malaria. Um, and I still think we should maybe look and check his hemoglobin levels to uh, check for anemia. But otherwise, we didn't really notice much paler. Um, and it doesn't seem like he has acute respiratory infection. Or, or typhoid fever. Um, so I think what we should do is, would you mind sharing with me uh, the results from a rapid diagnostic test and a blood smear to learn a little bit more about whether he has um, malaria? Yeah, so um, the rapid diagnostic test for malaria that was done showed um, a positive um, RDT test for malaria and for the microscopy test, also shows a smear of two pluses per okay. 10 per half and 10 um, high power fields. So yeah, the okay, price is Okay, thank you. Yeah, so um, just so you all know, the rapid diagnostic test is, is a pretty easy, efficient way to test for malaria, exactly. but the results kind of just show you whether it's positive or negative, and it's pretty hard to yeah. sort of assess the severity. So by doing yeah. the microscopy, that kind of works as like the gold standard to get a better sense of it. So our patient does have malaria and now we have the proof of that. Um, and would you mind just telling me um, if there's results from the complete blood count, uh, what the patient's hemoglobin level is looking like? Yeah, so um, the hemoglobin level as tested was um, um, 12 um, grams per deciliter. Okay, well, that's very good news to hear, all right. So we'd be concerned. Yeah. We'd be concerned that maybe there was a mild case of of nutritional anemia, anemia if uh, his hemoglobin level was probably below eleven. And if it were below like seven, then we'd really be worried that it would be quite severe. So the fact that yeah. it's twelve grams per deciliter is very reassuring. Um, and um, just from any results from from any culture tests or anything, there's no um, evidence of of acute respiratory infection or typhoid fever, correct? Yes, the blood culture that was done didn't yield growth of um, any bacterial organisms so far. Okay. So we have none to prove. Yeah, so, so everyone, as a result of, of checking out all of these test results, um, we're able to conclude that uh, Mustafa here has malaria, but he does not have uh, a low hemoglobin level that would be um, sort of worrisome for us. Uh, and he also has, has proven negative for typhoid fever and for acute respiratory infections. So that's all really good news, but we definitely need to, to treat this malaria. Um, so after providing that diagnosis, I would definitely recommend um, that to treat the malaria, we use um, an artemisinin based combination therapy, uh, which is the type of medication that's best for that. Uh, and I think we could use something like coartum because that usually does a pretty good job. Uh, and the fact that it's not comorbid with anything is good. We probably don't need to use like an IV or testinate, um, but the coartum itself should be, should be pretty good for treatment. Um, and does that sound good? I also think maybe continuing with the antipyretics would be great to help with the symptoms a little as well. Yeah, it will. Yeah, okay. Um, and then in addition, just to show them a little bit more about the public health side of things, um, do you mind asking uh, the patient if uh, he has any um, like mosquito netting or any techniques to try and avoid malaria? Okay, Mustafa. I get a kind of net mosquito nets. Hey, I'm not that kind of fanish. You go one and cover and fanish. Okay, one and okay. But the mosquito back and funny that then go a call for an worker. Okay, so um, he says, um, not until recently, he's not been using the treated mosquito nets, but 
Recently, he started using them. But prior to that, he's been using insecticides. Yeah, to, okay. To Great, yeah, thank take you. Take care yeah. goes to bed. Got yeah. it, all right. I would say definitely, yeah, it's important to think about future prevention so, so that Mustafa doesn't come back again with malaria too soon. We don't want him in this situation again. So I would definitely recommend yeah recommend that mosquito netting as much as possible um, and insecticide and stuff that's all great i would also just recommend trying to make sure that there isn't any like flat sitting water around as that's going to attract the mosquitoes but also just staying yeah. covered up to prevent mosquito bites using that bug spray all of that stuff if it can be accessible is a definitely a great a great strategy to try and avoid malaria in the future yeah, yeah perfect yeah so ever as as hopefully you all know, malaria comes from the female Anopheles mosquito. So by trying to avoid those mosquito bites, that's going to be a great way for Mustafa to to prevent getting malaria again, so he doesn't have to be here in this situation. Um. All right. So that's sort of an example of of a diagnosis. Can we all can we all thank uh, Mustafa here for for being able to do this, being willing to do this for us today? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. What is to say? Okay, he says you're welcome. Yeah, we really, we all hope that he gets better soon, and and we're really grateful for him doing this with us today. Okay, okay. Thank you for speaking with me too, Morgan. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> we really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, and, and just so you all know, uh, if you attend the program, we have a whole group of, of partnered doctors with us who continue to do diagnosis. So it's really great that we have this relationship with them and this long-term relationship with the Nagari Medical Clinic and Maternity Ward. Um, so that's, that's a pretty cool thing too. You get a chance to, to get to know them all better. So thank you so much, you guys. Thank you so much, Morgan. All I look right. forward to seeing you again. Yeah, I'll see you again soon. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. our but Um. So I think I saw in the chat somewhere um that there's some some questions. Maybe does anyone have any questions? No worries if not, and I can also walk you through sort of some more information. Okay. I don't want to put any pressure on anyone. I know that the Zoom anxiety is a little, a little scary oh, yeah. to unmute in front of everyone. Um, I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I was in here from the very beginning because I, could, um, but what's geared towards? Like I'm a freshman in college, so oh, yeah. is this like, what what age is this? Yeah. So so this these internships are offered from freshman year to freshman year. So basically, if you're a rising freshman in high school all the way to being a rising freshman in college, uh, you're eligible to participate in our internships. And we're actually willing and thrilled to have more people this summer. Um, we're kind of pushing for that even. We wanna make sure that if you guys would like to come while you're still el eligible, that you can do that, especially because so many programs have had to either cancel or, or postpone until following years. We've created this virtual um, version of the internships to make sure that people who want to but are running out of time can still participate. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, any other questions? Morgan, I do see a question here in the chat from Kirsten. Um, she's asking, how would you rule out a rare disease? Yeah, absolutely. So um, obviously we acknowledge that that I and the other interns who are involved in this internship are not actually uh, qualified doctors yet and are not are not well too well versed in, in that many diseases um, and understanding how to diagnose them. Um, so we work with our partner doctors so that they can help you out, but also to make sure um, that we're diagnosing uh, diseases that are, are relevant to um, the four that we mentioned. So we really just zoom in our lens on those four illnesses that are the most prevalent. And, and believe it or not, because they are so prominent, those 
it, it's not too hard to, to have access specifically to those diseases. That's usually what patients are experiencing anyway. Um, so malaria, for example, is a really common one at all ages um, for people to be having. Uh, so uh, in the internship and like, for example, with what I was just doing, uh, we don't have to worry too much about uh, uh, any rare diseases, but mainly just making sure that you really have a very good understanding of those four in particular. Um, and I also see, yeah, of course. Thanks for asking. Um, we have um, two more questions here in the chat. Um, okay. If you wanted to take them real quick, uh, they're I, I kind of combine them because I think they're similar. How okay. do um, those who are interested find out to uh, more information about the internship and how can they apply? Yeah, I can actually, uh, I'm not sure if I have permission to, but I'd love to share my screen if that's possible. I can show you guys the website. Oh, I do have permission. Oh, cool. Okay. So um, if you don't mind, I'm just going to share my screen quickly. Can everyone see this browser I have pulled open? Okay. Oh, good. All right, so uh, you know enough enough time on Zoom and it starts to get a, a bit easier. Um, so we have a leadership initiatives website, and if you type in lihosa.org, so you know we're the li and you guys are the hosa, and together that's that's what we're trying to do. Um, you'll be brought to this page uh, on the leadership initiatives website, uh, and we have information specific to hosa. So this can talk about the code that you're using, HOSA hashtag 1000 upon enrollment. Uh, and that's how you can make your scholarship eligible for being involved in HOSA. Not only being involved, but being so good at it clearly by being here. Um, and then at the bottom, we have our interest form, our enrollment form, and the ability to nominate students. So the interest form is non-binding, but make sure that we have your name in the system. So we can, you know, on our end, try and persuade you, but also just make sure that you have up-to-date information about attending our internships. So uh, I would recommend the interest form for sure, if, if this at all is something you're curious about, even if it's not for this year, the interest form is really great because it just sort of puts you in our periphery. We're making sure that we know that you're interested and we'd love to, to talk with you more about it, um, but it doesn't sign you up or anything. If you do want to actually enroll, which we'd love to have you this summer, uh, you can go straight to the enrollment form. And that's another place where you'll be able to make the uh, scholarship eligible. Uh, and you can show on the inter interest form too that you're from HOSA. So all of these things you can specify specifically to this presentation. Um, and we'd love to, to chat with you more about that. Uh, and then you can just explore this whole website. Um, we talk about both our neuroscience internship and our, our medical program where you're doing the diagnosis. Uh, and then it talks about some of the other great benefits that we offer to uh, students who attend as interns. Um, we acknowledge that, that college is a pretty big stepping stone in, in pursuing this career path, specifically medicine. Uh, I'm in a position where I'm starting to be preparing for MCATs and making a med school list. So I certainly am aware of that. Uh, and we want to yeah. make sure that we give you help with that. So SAT and ACT training, college probability modeling, college admissions panels, those are all included um, in, our intern in our internship programs. So that's some information about that too. Does anyone have any other questions? Uh, I can also gladly talk about the neuroscience internship too, since we have a couple minutes here. I'd love to plug that as well. Uh, we're actually involved uh, in our first neuroscience internship of the summer right now. So I left a little early from that to come join this Zoom and it's going extremely well. Um, I'm biased as a neuroscience major in, in college, but uh, this program works with Dr. James Giordano from Georgetown University. Uh, who is the director of their neuroethics department uh, and is widely regarded in the neuroethics fields around the country. Uh, and we actually have several international doctors working with us as well. So he's, he's quite well regarded around the world for that matter. Uh, and this internship is designed to immerse students in the fields of neuroethics. So looking at neuroscience, but also how much it matters around the globe and the impact that technology and treatment and research has um, on different people. 
And that, that internship also has this sort of culminating project structure where you work in a team to design your own research proposal. Uh, so you come up with a question, a hypothesis, do lots of background research. Uh, and at the end of the internship, you present your research proposal to a panel of, of uh, neuroscientists. Uh, and in addition to getting great feedback, some of the best um, research proposals actually get taken on um, to work in a group setting with the intention of, of publishing and, and preparing it for publication. So that's a really, really great opportunity as well. Um, as, as I'm sure you all know, publication is a pretty great thing, especially to have on your high school resume. That's very, very cool. Uh, so that's a little bit about us. I think we have seven minutes left if I saw that in the chat. Um, so yeah. Yes. Um, so the meeting will automatically end at 2.45 in order to prepare for the next, next session, but maybe we can take one more question that I see in the chat from Crystal. Um, which is what is the program's cost? Right, okay, yeah. So this is all included on the website and we can provide you more information. Uh, and I say that as a kind of a vague answer in that uh, we have the HOSA 1000 scholarship for you all, but in addition, we'd love to work with you and talk to you about potential additional scholarships um, and uh, fundraising options to make it more accessible too. Uh, so, Really, we would love to have you uh, and we can provide more information about that, but we do have additional scholarship too, if that's of interest. So I recommend checking it all out on the website and filling out that interest form to get more information about that too. Um, I can show you though, if you'd like, we can go to the online programs and take a look at advanced medical and public health. And I can show you this has information about um, the tuition and the different dates uh, and how it works like that. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, so so this is just a bit more about our internship. Uh, we have these fantastic videos. I highly recommend you may see cameos of me in them too. Um, but uh, these talk about some of the different speakers we have come and speak to our students and some of the great opportunities. I always love every year we have um, a pediatric urologist uh, and surgeon from Washington DC speak to our students uh, and she does such a fantastic job of, of depicting surgery in a way that's so engaging for all of the high school age students um, and you know she's she's just so candid about what it's really like in that in that position and, and how to get into it and that's one of the really really cool ones. We also have someone come speak to the students about emergency medicine um, and being on the front lines, uh, we have a speaker talk about um, neurology and neuroscience with them as well. So that sort of connects over to our neuroscience program. Uh, and then we have a lot of public health speakers come too. So we've had people speak on behalf of the WHO uh, and on behalf of UNICEF. So it's a really great way to kind of build your network and figure out what you're interested in. Um, Crystal said, who do I need to speak to for other scholarships? So uh, if you fill out that interest form, we'll be able to get in contact with you. Uh, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty close knit uh, group of us over here at Leadership Initiatives. So we will definitely be able to get in, in contact with you. Uh, and it'll probably be Marshall Bailey, who's the executive director, um, or Lauren Hensel also does a lot of work with recruitment. So they'll be able to, to get in touch. <coughs> Excuse me, lots of talking. Um, can I answer any other questions for anyone? Oh, I see that. I see a message from Benjamin Cohen. I thought I recognized that picture. Um, he actually has attended one of our leadership initiatives programs before. All right, anyone else? All right, I don't see any other questions. Uh, I can stop sharing my screen. Thank you so much for having me here today, by the way. I'm, I'm again, very grateful for it. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all um, learned something uh, and we look forward to, to hearing more from you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, thank you. Oh, this is really sweet to see all these these comments in the chat. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Okay, so I was speaking now, Morgan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye, Awal. You're all set to go now. I'll, I'll talk to you later, okay? It's all right, then. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. Everybody loved the presentation. They're all saying thank you in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> <For that. laughs> All right, bye all. <laughs> okay, bye bye, Morgan. <laughs>